Okay, and that's that. We've got all the vegetables that we're going to use tonight chopped up and good to go. The soup is ready for all the regulars to come in and start off with that. With the type of weather we've got out there, I wouldn't be surprised. They're probably going to want to put something warm in their bellies. All of the meat is marinated as well. All you have to do is give it a quick fry and they're good to go. Apart from that, everything is spick and spam. There's not one crevice in here that you will find that's sturdy. Well, Laura, that's amazing to hear. You're my little superstar, you are. When you told me that you wanted to come in later today to do the prep, I was a little bit worried. Using the way I've told everyone to do it takes quite a bit of time. The fact that you said that you found a fast way to do it really surprised me. You've only been working here for a couple of months. How is it that you've been able to get so good at this job so quickly? Well, I'm not really sure what I can tell you, Michael. I guess being in this industry is my type of thing. I was made to do something like this. Is that so? Well, let me tell you something. Laura, you're quite an intelligent individual. I wouldn't be surprised if you went to university and got some sort of career that interested you. Don't you ever think about going down that route sometimes? Maybe your talents are wasted in a place like this. Yeah, well, I know what I'm capable of. And I also know what I want to do. I've already evaluated my options and what I can do in my life. I mean, sure, I could go off and study and probably do a really good job at it. But is it going to be something I enjoy? That's a different question. Anyway, I really love this restaurant. I love the customers. I love doing the cooking. I love having you as a boss. You really inspired me to do something good here. Well, I guess the feeling is mutual then, Laura. I can't tell you how much of a boon it is to have you here. I mean, sure, all my other workers are fantastic as well. I love every single one of you. You all do a very good job. I try to reward everyone handsomely for it. But then there's you. You go a mile further, taking on extra duties, being one of the main chefs in the kitchen. It's honestly a really big help. Well, I'm happy to be of service. Don't forget that I'm your part-time therapist as well. I'd say that's one of my more important duties around here. You're not wrong about that. I don't even include that in your paycheck. I think someone has to get a raise by the end of this month. That is long overdue, to be honest. Speaking of being your therapist, how are things going lately? Are you starting to get along with the in-laws? Oh boy. That time has started now, has it? To answer your question, no. I have to tell you, I really married a woman with one hell of a family. I don't know if I'm lucky or if I'm unlucky. The perks of being with my wife are a huge bonus, but at the same time, dealing with her dad is still a pain. I just don't know what I can do to get along with the guy. For some reason, he hates me. There's something inherent about me that he doesn't like. I'm still doing my best to search around and prod to see what he's got an issue with, but I haven't had much luck so far. Wow, that's really sad to hear. I think you're an amazing guy, Michael. I hope he sees that someday. You know what, Laura? It's really good having you around. You're the only person to say that type of thing to me. It really helps with my mental state. Anyway, you know what? Speaking of my in-laws, I'm going to have to have dinner tonight with them. My wife and I are going to visit their house. Wish me luck. Let's just hope that they don't poison my food or something. Okay, come back in one piece. I may be your super worker, but I don't know if I can run this place all on my own. Disappointing. What happened yesterday was absolutely disappointing. I cannot believe that happened. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Michael. How can you call yourself a real man after displaying such carelessness like that? Are you still going on about that, Martin? I already heard enough of your opinions yesterday. I get it. Things didn't live up to your expectations. I already heard enough of it. Are you seriously going to lecture me today, too? I have a lot of things to do. I get that I screwed up, but I really just want to get on with what I've got to do. I'm going to lecture you as much as I need to. As much as necessary. Let me tell you something, Michael. There's a lot of work that needs to be done with you. You're far from a possible candidate to marry one of my children. Yeah, well, I'm afraid that you're a little bit late to the ship. Your daughter has already decided to marry me. We've been married for a long time now. It's about time that you accept that reality. Don't think it slips my mind. 
I'll never forget being at the wedding and the amount of dread for what was to come. Honestly, what was that woman thinking getting with a man like you? What sort of lies did you plant into her head? I know my children. I know the type of people that they want to be with. They don't choose partners that are embarrassingly pathetic at their crap that they invest their time in. I mean, what the hell was that yesterday? Do you really call that a dinner? Is that something you meant to eat with family? You've spent your whole life cooking, haven't you? I thought you could do something better than that. What are you talking about right now, Martin? The dish I cooked for you yesterday wasn't that bad. It's actually something quite similar to something I put on my menu. You telling me that a simple stir-fry wasn't to your liking? Of course it's not. I'm your father-in-law, right? You're meant to be cooking me something that impresses me. Something I haven't had before. Why would you cook me something that you would eat on a regular Friday night? That's just disrespectful. Well, I have to be honest. I think it's very disrespectful to invite me over for dinner and expect me to be the one that cooks. If you had that intention in mind, you could have let me know in the first place. You wanted me to cook everything for you and only had limited access to ingredients. You don't exactly stock your house up with a lot of things that I can use. See, and that's why I know that you aren't the right man for my daughter. That right there is you making excuses. You're trying to blame me for the fact that you can't cook properly. Honestly, I have heard from my daughter about what you want to do with that restaurant of yours. You want to have stores all around the country? Huh! With the type of wimpy mentality that you have, it's not going to happen. You better work on yourself a lot more before you try to do something like that. A guy like you won't last 10 days managing a franchise of businesses. What do you mean, my mentality? You have a soft mentality. I could tell. I've known it from day one. That little restaurant of yours landed in your hands. You didn't have to build it from nothing. You didn't have to struggle to get it. Think about what would have happened if your father didn't pass away in that car accident. What would you actually be doing? Nothing. You got lucky, and you're not even taking advantage of the situation that you have. You could expand and grow if you only had the tenacity to do it. It really is quite sad. Well, I'm sorry, Martin. I respect you as my father-in-law, but you don't have the right to talk about matters that you have no clue about. You don't know how I run my business. You don't know anything about my drive, my determination, and my eagerness to succeed. My eagerness to expand. All you can think about is how much of a pathetic son-in-law I am. And you always view me through those lenses. You don't see the good things that I do. The amount of hours I spend on my business. You know what? I've been married to your daughter for a good five years now. You and I have never gotten along. It's taken me this long to ask, but why? Why is it that you talk to me this way? How come you can't respect me? You really want to know? Do I really have to tell you? I thought this should be something that you should know inherently. Well, I honestly don't. If I'm being honest, Martin, I've been very polite with you. I always give in to your demands. Despite the way you talk to me, I still try to maintain a good relationship with you. But I feel like everything I do is one-sided. So yes, I do need a reason. If there's a problem here that I can fix, then I'll do it. That is, if what you're going to tell me is an actual problem. If you just give me nonsense, then I'm not really sure what to do about us. It's very simple. In fact, I'm going to summarize it all into one word. The problem with you is balls. I'm sorry. What did you say? That's right. You heard me. Balls. I don't think you have them. You could pull them out in front of me, and I don't think I would believe what I'm looking at. You're a man without balls, and it's embarrassing to have someone like that be part of my family. Martin, what the hell? What is this crap you're telling me right now? Let me ask you this, Michael. You've been into my study room, correct? Yes. Every time I come over to your house, you just love showing me in there. I've seen it many times. Why? Okay, well, you would have seen the wall with all the photos of my children. A family tree, if you will. I wasn't like you when I was your age. I actually got busy. I got down to work and got things done. 
I've had so many children that I've had to fill that wall with photos. It's absolutely overwhelming to look at. How many men have a family that large? How many men have had that many women? Okay, yes, I understand that you have a great family. There's a lot of people there. I can't even remember everyone's name. I should just bow down and praise how amazing you are. Is that something you want? What I want is for you to cut the snarky attitude. It's not going to help you. But my wall is something to look at, isn't it? Let me tell you something, Michael. Every single one of my children has either done something amazing, or they've married someone who's done something amazing. Take one of my eldest children. He's an up-and-coming tennis player. He's been scouted as one of the best potentials for this era. Give it a couple of years and he'll be the face of tennis. Okay, you're talking about the douchebag that doesn't say sorry to you when he bumps into you and spills your drink all over your shirt. Yeah, he's a great guy. Love him. Can't get enough of him. What about my daughter married to that young man, Kevin? What a confident and amazing boy that one is. His whole life he's been trained to have excellent eye coordination. He's been fantastic at operating a vehicle. Where did that skill take him? To the skies! Now he's in the military. He's actually flying jets. He's one of the best they have. He gets assigned to any of the important missions. He's one of their star players. He has a long list of accolades within the military. He's a man that someone can be proud of. He also gets hostile whenever you give him some sort of eye contact. He's always looking for some reason to fight. Much like the job he has in the skies, he's constantly looking down on people. Do you see what I'm trying to get out here, Michael? Am I painting the picture clear enough for you? My family is a lineage of successful and competent individuals. This is our reputation. This is what we are known for. This is how people view me. It's where I get my respect. So what am I going to do when there's a loose chain within my family? What do I do with a guy that can't bring his business to new heights? Some guy who can't even give my daughter a child. That man right there is someone without balls. And I'm embarrassed to have him in my family. That's what all this is about, isn't it? You hate the fact that we haven't had a child yet. You finally caught on. Listen here, Michael. I'm going to be an old man. I want to have many grandchildren come to see me. They're going to be my new happiness. Why is that such a big deal? Can't you tolerate just one of your kids not having a child? You have plenty of other children, don't you? One child isn't anything. That won't do. I'm not going to settle for anything less than everyone. This is the type of person I am. It's this demanding attitude that got me to the place I am now. How about I ask you a question in return? What's your excuse for not giving me a grandson or a granddaughter? Tell me the truth. You're lacking in some certain equipment to get the job done, aren't you? Don't try and lie. That's the reason, isn't it? I don't even know how to respond to that. Having an argument on whether or not I have genitalia is just preposterous. Look, I've had a discussion with your daughter and she's agreed. She's going to wait until I can get my business up and running. I want it to be flourishing. If I have a child, I have to devote my time to it, raising it. I knew you would try and use your business as some sort of excuse. Let's just face it. You don't have what it takes to become a father. That's not true. I love children. I'd love to have my own child someday. But I have a philosophy on this type of thing. If I ever have a child, I'll devote all my time into it. It's going to be the only thing that's important to me in this world. At the moment with my business, I can't prioritize my child. Things are going to get chaotic. Jenny understands this. Her and I have talked about this. We've made our decision. I honestly don't see what that girl saw in you when she decided to marry you. Jenny was the one that I had higher hopes for. She had the most potential. Stunningly good looking, just like her father had the wits to match it as well. A charismatic and adoring personality that people would be attracted to. It really is a shame that all of that is wasted on you. Your daughter and I have known each other for a very long time. We've been together since we were in high school. We're two people that can know and trust each other. That counts for something. She's not going to find that in another guy. I know, I know. 
You've managed to brainwash her into thinking she won't find happiness with a man that's actually a man. The years of bondage you two have built is impressive, I'll say that much. But don't you dare think all of that is going to last forever. You've gotten this far with my daughter on just friendship alone. But she's getting older. She's going to realize a couple of things. She's probably going to start regretting her decision marrying you. Well, we'll just see about that, won't we, Martin? At the end of the day, whether or not you'd like to accept it, I am a good man. I work hard, and a lot of what I'm doing right now is for the future of your daughter and I. If she's a smart person, she'll respect that. Besides, if she tried to break things up with me at this point in her life, how are things going to go for her? I don't think it's going to be that easy for her to find a new partner that quickly. What makes you say that? She comes from a very powerful family. Guys would be interested in that. Perhaps, perhaps, but let's face the facts. Are they going to be the type of men that you respect? I highly doubt that. They will be the guys at the bottom of the barrel hoping that the dad will give them a payout. Let's face it, I love your daughter for who she is and the history we've had together. Other guys will look at her as easy money. She's an older girl, so it won't take long to crack into her heart. From that point on, they would try to get on your good side. At least I'm real about you and my intentions. You should be grateful for that much. You've got quite a lot of nerve on you, don't you? I think it's really sad that we have to talk this way, Martin. I know you have your prejudices against me, but I'm seriously open to having a good relationship with my father-in-law. We are family at the end of the day. Let's just accept the facts. The likelihood of me breaking up with your daughter is very low. It's better if we just make the decision to get along despite our differences. Don't you think that's the grown-up thing to do? Who do you think you are telling me what the grown-up thing to do is? Who's the older one here? Respect your elders! You've been told to do that since you were a young man, yes? What about respect for me? Look, if you want me to get along with you, you're gonna have to earn my respect. Clearly you're not doing it with your business. You don't have any side operation that you earn income from either. I guess that just leaves us with one other option. Okay. And what would that option be? Maybe you and I can do something together. Something that we both can do. You're getting up there in years, so I'm not going to expect a lot of physical activity. How about we go fishing? That's a good way for us to enjoy ourselves. Are you joking? Fishing? That's something that the common man would do. I don't waste my time on that sort of thing. No, I'm not going to treat you as somebody that I hang out with. You're going to come here and you're going to help clean my house. Help me with the various things that I need done around here. I'm sorry, what now? That's right. You keep telling me that you're a hard worker and you'll do anything for your business. Well, let me see it in action. Let me see how well you do at cleaning my house. If you pass my little test, then why not? I'll start looking on you more favorably. Martin, is this really necessary? Am I honestly going to gain your respect from doing this? This sounds like a really silly idea. You have maids to do that type of thing. Why should I be the one that's doing it? Hey, aren't you listening to what I'm saying? This isn't about whether or not you can do the job. This is about you showing me the type of person you are. Think about it. Let's say that you do come here. You start initiating the tasks that I need you to do. Depending on the attitude you give me at that point in time, I can make a fair assessment of your character. I see. So that's what all of this is about, is it? You want to see how I get a job done? Fine. You know what? I can come over next week. I've got a lot to do with my business. We're getting in a lot of customers recently, and I'm trying to catch up with everything. I'll put some time aside for you, though. That's how much I value us getting along together. Are you kidding me? You're gonna wait a whole week? That's not a good look, Michael. If you really care about us, you'll come over right now. Are you serious right now? I can't do that. I got plans with your daughter. And then I've got to prepare for the service tonight. I'm falling behind enough as it is talking with you. Okay, I see how it is. So clearly everything you were telling me before was just honeyed words. You were just trying to sing music to my ears. You don't actually care about the relationship between us. That's fine. If you want to have it that way, I'm happy to have bad blood between us. The more that my daughter sees that we're not getting on, the more likely she's going to get a divorce. 
It's a win-win for me. I'll let you choose what you want to do. You come here and you clean my house, or you get a divorce with my daughter. Fine. Fine. You know what? I'll come over. But you have to understand how much I'm going out of my way here. I don't have a lot of time. So I hope you're not going to make me do anything stupid. You're going to do whatever I say for you to do. I expect to see you here within the next 20 minutes. What the hell? It takes 40 minutes to drive there. How am I meant to get there in 20? I'm not even ready at the moment. You'll figure it out. Chop chop. Jenny, where are you right now? I'm starting to get really worried. If you're angry about today, you need to have a talk with me about it. There's a reason why I wasn't able to come to our date. Can you please just talk to me and we can work all of this stuff out? I don't have anything to say to you. I can't believe that you would actually stand me up. Do you know how long I waited there for you? No messages, no calls, no nothing. I even tried to get in contact with you and you ignored me. Some husband you are. Jenny, look, I can explain. None of this is my fault. Just give me a chance to speak. <laughs> yeah, right. Here we go. You've had all day to think of an excuse to tell me. Don't worry. I already know you're off with some girl, aren't you? I'm sorry. What did you say? Don't think I haven't realized. You and that little twerp at that restaurant have been hitting it off, haven't you? I've seen the way you guys look at each other. The way you talk. Don't think I'm some sort of idiot, Michael. Wait, hold on a second. You're not talking about Laura right now, are you? You know damn straight who I'm talking about, Michael. That goody little two-shoes. Don't fall for that fake little smile she gives everyone. It's good for the customers, but you have to be smarter than that. You don't actually think she likes you, do you? Hold on a second. Now, you seriously think there's something going on between me and that girl, don't you? Jenny, babe, I've committed my whole life to you. I'm not gonna throw it away for some girl that I just met. She's only worked there for a couple of months. Yeah, and that just goes to show how low you are, doesn't it? It's only been a couple of months and you're already starting to hit on your employees. No wonder you're finding it so hard to set up a new shop elsewhere. You just can't keep your mind off that type of thing. You can't keep yourself focused. All you can think about is getting a piece of some young action. Hold on a second. This is diverging so far away from what I wanted to talk about. Look, I promise you there's nothing going on between me and that girl. Sure, we get along and I enjoy her company. I'll admit that much. Not only that, but she's a great worker. I'm really appreciative that she's there. But that doesn't mean I'm cheating on you with her. I don't know what you've been reading into, but any sort of praise I give her is so that she continues to work there. It's purely business. If it's purely business, then what are you off doing with her today? What do you mean? I had her in the store. She was running everything for me. She's making sure that service was going well tonight. We wouldn't get a chance to hang out even if I wanted to. Okay, I see how it is then. You leave one of your girls in the store as you go see another one. That's quite smart. You've really done this for a while, haven't you, Michael? You've owned these little tactics of yours. Honestly, I can't believe I chose this guy to be the one I married. We've been married for so long. I've known you ever since we were in high school. Something like this was bound to happen eventually, wasn't it? What are you talking about? I'm talking about you, of course. Why wouldn't you want to taste chocolate? Everyone else has chocolate sometimes, don't they? All you've had is boring or vanilla me your whole life. You just can't be satisfied with it, can you? Huh? What are you talking about? Ice cream? It's a metaphor! Look, let me remind you about something, buddy. There are a lot of people craving someone like me. I'd be a little bit more appreciative of what you have if I were you. Jenny, what you're talking about right now is crazy. You know what? Look, fair enough. I get it. You're worried about things. I understand. I'm sorry if I didn't properly explain the relationship between Laura and I. I should have been more considerate. Of course you're going to view things this way. But you have my honesty right now. Nothing is going on between us. 
can we put this behind us now? Fine. But don't think that I don't still suspect you. I'm only dropping this because I don't have solid evidence yet. Don't get sloppy, though. I've got my eye on you. If you slip up even a little bit, I'm going to find out. Oh, and I'll also be watching her as well. I know a little snake when I see one. She's quite good at hiding who she really is. But she's got no idea what type of person I am. I'm quite good at spotting these types of things out. Okay, well, that's great and everything, but let me say one thing. You're gonna be wasting your time watching Laura, if that's really what you're planning to do. She's a good person, and I know what type of life she has. You're gonna get bored before you find anything. Don't think that's gonna dissuade me, Michael. I know you have your little tricks as well. Anyway, when you decided to ditch me today, I had nothing else to do but hang out with my friends. We've all been talking about you. They're on the same page as me. They think you're up to something. Are you serious right now? Your friends as well? Of course. They're not as dumb as you think they are, Michael. I choose my friends wisely. These girls know what's up. Okay. I understand that. I'm not calling them dumb. It's just that I thought your friends and I got along really well. I can't believe that they would doubt me this way. So they think I'm up to something as well, do they? Of course they do. You're a guy that owns his own shop. You've got that older, mature look that all the younger girls like. They're hella suspicious of you. I, for one, don't blame them. Okay. Well, you've had enough time hanging out with them. They're probably instilling some really unhealthy ideas in your head. Do you reckon you can come home and we can have a chat? I've just had the craziest sequences of events and I need to offload onto someone, especially to you. This one concerns your father and I. Oh, okay. Well, this is something that I want to hear. Well, if that's the case, hurry on back home. Have you had dinner yet? I'll get something on. I know you're the one that usually cooks, but I'll do it just for tonight. Are you kidding me? You deserve to be punished for not telling me the truth today. Don't you realize that you stood me up? I'm not going to give you the gratitude of seeing me. Come on, Jenny. Don't play that game. Let's talk about this like we're adults. We're not in high school anymore. What are you trying to say? That I'm childish or something? How dare you? How dare you call me that when you're just some scumbag cheater flirting around with young women? Oh my god, Jenny. It's not like that. Would you just listen to what I have to say already? If you let me explain what happened today, this will all make sense. I'm not coming back there. Fine, I get it. If you're not gonna come home for us to talk, I'll message you here. There's a reason why I couldn't see you today. I was looking forward to our date. I honestly was. You have to believe me. <laughs> yeah, right. If you were that excited to see me, you would have been there, wouldn't you? Jenny, come on. You know all the stuff I have to do, right? I'm always killing for a break to see you. I mean, let's face it, you've got your own job. I'm busy enough with my restaurant as it is. When there's actually a time where we can be together, you have no idea how much I want to be there. So what I'm saying is that I wanted to see you today. I want you to believe it. Huh. <laughs> if you think your little sweet words are working against me, they're not. I still think that you're a manipulative, backstabbing liar. Well, you know what? That's going to have to do for now. So listen, let me tell you about the reason why I wasn't there today. I was getting ready this morning. I was just about to leave and meet you at the movie cinema. That's when I got a message from your dad. He was really angry at me. Oh, he was angry, was he? Well, there's only one thing that I can say to that. It serves you right. Maybe a little bit of heat from my dad will put you in your place. Make you realize how privileged you are to be married to me. What do you mean, Jenny? You saying I don't appreciate you staying with me? Of course I do. You're the love of my life. I've been with you for this long, haven't I? Don't you start doubting me now. Anyway, listen to me. Your dad. He wasn't happy about yesterday. Do you remember that he set me up to cook for him? What do you mean he set you up? You guys organized for you to cook, right? Except you weren't organized at all. You made a complete mess of it. Are you serious right now? 
Are you judging my food as well? Well, I gotta be honest, Michael. It's about time you get a reality check. I mean, me and my dad are not one of the common folk. Maybe the plebeians will enjoy your food, but we're used to the high-end stuff. Eating something that actually tastes good? You telling me that you can't cook up something that they would serve in a Michelin star restaurant? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure I can. But at the same time, is that really the experience you want? This is meant to be a fun time between family. Not only that, but I didn't exactly have the best implements to cook something good, did I? I had to make do with what I had there. Yeah, well, all I'm saying is that it makes sense that my dad was angry after a meal like that. You really insulted him. If we were at a restaurant, he'd be roaring his head off at you. Are you serious right now? Your dad would actually do that? I think he really needs to calm down. Look, you're not really in a position to tell my dad to calm down or not. You've got no idea what he's had to do. The type of life he's lived to get to the place that he is now. You sure about that one, Jenny? Are you really sure? Why wouldn't I be sure? He raised me, didn't he? I know all his stories. I know, I know. And you've told me them as well. You're telling me about your dad inheriting his father's million-dollar business and turning that million-dollar business into one and a half million dollars. The fantastic story about your father. Look, I get it. Not many guys can create that much money. I mean, $500,000? That's a lot. Exactly. And he worked his whole life trying to work his way up to that much money. So you better have some respect for him. So, what did you tell my father when he was texting you today? I hope you apologized. If you thought he was angry yesterday, you should see him with anyone else that's not actually family. Well, look, we argued back and forth on what happened yesterday. I'm not going to compromise on this one, Jenny. I don't feel wrong about this. Well, you should be. Well, I'm sorry, but I just don't. I told him how I felt. I questioned him about why he doesn't respect me. Why he has this weird hatred for me. At the end of the day, it all came down to the fact that you and I aren't having children. Not only that, but he doesn't believe that I can take over my father's business anyway. He thinks I'm just going to stay here in this little restaurant for the rest of my life. You know how long I spend working on my store, don't you? I'm not satisfied with just mediocrity. I'm really trying to aim high here. Surely you can see that. I don't know. If you were aiming high, you would actually get there, wouldn't you? Are you sure you're trying hard enough? Are you kidding me right now? So, now you're joining his side? What the hell? This doesn't make any sense to me. Now my wife is against me. Well, hey, let me tell you one thing. My dad never stood me up. If I ever had a plan with him, he'd be there. I could trust him. Unlike someone who didn't even have the decency to give me a ring today. Come on, don't blame me for that. That was entirely your father's fault. He was the one that took me away from you. I explained to him that we have plans today. He said he's never going to give me his respect unless I go there and help him. Yeah, right. As if I'm going to believe something like that. Using my dad to hide the fact that you moved with some chick today. Jenny, come on. Are you seriously going to keep doubting me? I even have the chat log here if you want to see it so badly. Anyway, here's the thing. Your dad thinks that I'm not worthy of his respect until he can see me in action. He wants me doing a couple of chores around his house. He got me to do everything today. I mean everything. He's got a massive house. He sure does, doesn't he? How about you strive to own something like that one day? What do you think I'm doing right now? I'm not just going to click my fingers and it just pops into existence. You gotta let me work. Anyway, he had me do all sorts of things. He got me to cook all his meals for the day. He wanted me to clean every single wall. He got me in that bathroom for two hours scrubbing it. Afterwards, he went to the toilet and he said that I need to clean it again. Like, seriously, is all this stuff necessary? It just sounds like this guy's on a power trip. I'm not even guaranteed that I'm going to get his respect after all of this. Are you kidding me right now? You're going to whine about a little bit of housework? Come on. If this means that my dad starts to love you at the end of it, what's so bad about scrubbing the floor here and there? 
You need to show a bit more enthusiasm. This is degrading, Jenny. It's inhumane. He's got me down there scrubbing his floors. While I'm doing that, he's telling me I'm a good boy, like I'm some sort of dog. One time he came in and chucked a sausage on the floor and said lunchtime. He actually expected me to eat that. <laughs> That's my dad's humor for you. Can you please say something to him? Have a talk with him. Let him know how much work I'm putting into my business. Let him know that I'm not some loser that's sitting about all day doing nothing. I'm working towards something. I'm probably the type of guy that he respects. He just has to give me that chance. Don't talk to me about you and how hard you work. You don't think I knew what happened tonight? What do you mean what happened tonight? Well, instead of going to the restaurant and actually carrying out the service, you decided to spend a whole day with some other girl. Then you make up this nonsense story about you helping my dad. Do you really expect my dad to like someone this irresponsible? Are you kidding me right now? Are you seriously going to sit there and keep doubting me? Jenny, I wouldn't make any of this stuff up. You can take a look at the scabs all over my hands and know what I was doing today. You really are something. You've even gone as far as to give yourself some scabs. Anyway, you know what? I'm really disappointed in you today. I didn't think that you would actually stand me up like that. I'm going to stay at my friend's house tonight. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take the credit card and have a girl's night out. We can actually enjoy ourselves once. What do you mean a girl's night out? I haven't heard you say that word in years now. Right? It's about time that I've gone for one. We need to live it up big. We're going to go to the best clubs and we're going to go out in style. We'll hire out a limousine. We'll buy some fresh clothes. We're going to look absolutely gorgeous, and you're going to sit home wondering if your wife is being a good girl or not. Jenny, that money is not for you to use. That's money going towards the business. We made an agreement to leave that alone. Oh my god! Like, what business? What money is there to put into the business? It's not going anywhere. It's staying in the same place it will always be. How about you just shut up and let me enjoy my life for once? Stop trying to control me! Jenny, I'm telling you right now, don't you dare use that card. I've noticed you've been making a lot of purchases on it lately. Like, look at all the stuff we bought. I don't really need this. Hey, you're not ignoring me right now, are you? I'm telling you, there will be consequences if you use that card. Jenny! Jenny! Hey, Laura. I'm so sorry that it's taking me so long to contact you. I know things must have been chaotic yesterday without me. You wouldn't believe the type of things I've had to go through. It's been crazy. Anyway, I know that yesterday would have been a catastrophe. I'm going to try and pick up the pieces where I can. I'll be coming in today for the service. That being said, I'm probably not going to be there in the greatest of spirits. Oh, hey, Michael. I was wondering when you were going to get in contact with me. Everyone here was starting to get worried. We were all trying to contact you. We thought something might have happened. Maybe you got into a car crash or something? Anyway, you were talking about last night and not to worry. I realized pretty early that maybe you weren't going to come in. I took the reins and everything went smoothly. Everyone got their food and there wasn't one complaint. We did have to stay back a little bit later to do some cleanup, but that's about it. We wrote it on our timesheet, so make sure you pay us our overtime. Hey, look, don't worry. I'm not the type of guy to overlook that type of thing. All of you will be paid properly for your work yesterday. You guys pulled it off without a hitch, huh? We sure did. I mean, we all watched how you run the store, and all we had to do was just copy that. Even so, that's one of our busiest nights. I can't believe you guys managed to do it without me. I'm really impressed. That's one headache off the list. Yeah, well, what can I say? I do love a challenge. Anyway, what happened yesterday? You're not the type of guy that just ditches the store like that. I want to know what happened. Well, look. The saga of me and my demanding parents-in-law continues. Particularly with the father. Oh, boy. Here we go. Let's hear about the new developments, then. Well, the dad still has no respect for me. I finally found out it's because I can't compare to the rest of his family members. 
Not only that, but he's this big honcho gigolo that has a ton of different girlfriends in his lifetime. I think he has more kids than I have fingers and toes. So he looks at me as inferior because I don't even have one at the moment. Wow. This guy sounds pretty pretentious, to be honest. I mean, is that the measure of someone's value? How many girlfriends he has? He sounds like a pretty simple guy to me. Yeah, well, I think it's pretty petty as well. Regardless, he's got a lot of pride for it. Anyway, so he's made it very clear that he doesn't have any respect for me, and that I have to earn it somehow. I thought by focusing on my business and expanding it, he might show me a bit of that respect. But he thinks that me cleaning up his house and doing massages for him is a better way to do it. I'm sorry. What did you say? Massages? That's right. The guy actually gets me to massage him. That's what I was doing yesterday while you guys were running around trying to cover for me. He said that he needed a massage before he goes to bed and I need to do it properly. Anytime I tried to stop, he threatened to speak ill of me to my wife. This is someone that's already on bad terms with me. I can't do anything more to get on her bad side. Well, does she know what's happening to you? Have you explained it to her? Of course I have. She doesn't believe me. And even if she did believe me, she probably thinks I'm getting what I deserve. Her and I are having a lot of fights lately. I think it's not just her dad that doesn't respect me. I'm losing my wife's respect as well. That and she started to drill a hole in my pocket. In what way? Are you trying to say that she's using up all your money? She's been trying to in any way possible. I think I had consecutive weeks where she was trying to buy the exact same thing. If she didn't like an item, she sold it and tried to buy another one. There's just so much pointless spending going on. I don't know when it's going to stop. I have no idea why she's doing this either. At the moment, I'm struggling to maintain good relations with my family while also maintaining the upkeep of the store. I'm telling you right now, Laura, it's driving me insane. I can tell. You never really talked to me with this much hopelessness before. Well, if it's any consolation, anything that happens with the store, you can rely on me. I think I've gained a lot of confidence being able to manage everything yesterday. I don't want you to be worrying about that front. Thanks, Laura. You have no idea how much of a relief it is to have someone that I can actually rely on. Yes, so don't worry about your business. I'll do everything I can to keep it all stable. But I'm kind of worried about you and your wife. I mean, it sounds like you guys are going through something really serious right now. Is she worth all this trouble? Wow, now you're starting to sound like my father-in-law. You're thinking I should get a divorce or something, right? Well, I'm not thinking about something that extreme. But you should at least think about what's the reason you guys are dating in the first place, right? I mean, let's face it. It doesn't sound like you're having very good experiences with each other. You're also telling me that you barely see each other. You get worried what she gets up to in her own time. You're not wrong about that. I mean, she is working, so I know she's spending most of her time there. And then, apart from that, she always tells me that she's with her friends. Maybe it's just me, but I don't really feel like seeing the same people every week over and over. There's only so much fun stuff we can do. She barely makes time for us to hang out. And then when we do hang out, it always turns into an argument. Maybe our marriage is starting to reach a chaotic point. I thought we were going to be happy forever. Are you trying to tell me that there was a time where you guys were happy? I've only met you recently, so it sounds like everything is hell for you. Believe it or not, there was a time where everything was amazing. Her and I met when we were in high school. We had that typical high school love that everyone adores. Oh, wow. Really? I can't imagine you being such a cutie back then. I bet you bought her flowers and everything. Yeah, well, I'll say this. When Valentine's Day came around, I had the biggest bouquet of flowers for her. I think that's the type of guy I am. If I have someone special to me, I want them to feel that way. Whenever I'm doing something for them, I'm putting my heart into it. Well, Michael, that's just like so sweet. I wish all guys had that type of mentality. Yeah, well, unfortunately, those happy days went by pretty fast. A couple of years in high school doesn't compare to a relationship that's lasted over 10 years and has progressed into marriage. For the longest time, it was just me and her enjoying life, getting out there in the world, trying new things. She was in university and I was learning whatever I could about the restaurant with my dad. 
she managed to get a very high-paying job. She's still doing that type of work now. My dad passed away, and I took over the store. Okay, so it sounds like things were going good for you, right? When did things start going bad? What caused your relationship to turn into what it is now? Well, that's a very good question, Laura. What indeed? I guess the power dynamic is a little bit off at the moment, especially since Jenny comes from such a wealthy background. The fact that she's earning more money than me kind of puts her in the position to walk over me more. That's not to say that I don't aim to be wealthy in the future. It's still my intention to grow the store and have it all across the country. I want everyone to know the food that my dad created. You better be careful. Your food is the reason why I'm working here. You're gonna have people all around trying to get a job at a place like this. Especially if you're the one at the top. Everyone loves a good leader, but hey, I say the more the merrier. If people want to work that much, we may as well set up business overseas. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. The point is, I think there is a part of my wife that still loves me. All I have to do is get her respect. I can start by getting her dad to actually start liking me. As impossible as it feels. Sounds like you've got a lot on your plate, Michael. So how much do you have to appease this guy anyway? Well, look, this is something that I was thinking about today. It's really good to know that you guys pulled off last night without a hitch. I'm really proud of you. But I'm gonna have to ask you to perform a miracle again. Why is that? Well, the guy wants me to come over next week. He says he's got a massive job for me to do. It's gonna take a long time. I just know there's no way I'm gonna get back to the store. Even if there is a chance of me coming back, I don't want to risk it. I'd rather just have people there ready in advance. You think you can prepare a lot more food as well as do the service without me? Well, I don't know, Michael. How about we negotiate a pay raise before we do something like that? I guess there's a caveat to having such a smart individual working for me. Okay, fine. I'll raise your daily rate by $5. I'll do it for 10 Oh, wow. You really like putting me in a pinch, huh? $5 is already a huge raise. Well, you know what? 10 it is then. Why not? You're going above and beyond for me. Well, hey, I'm also your therapist, aren't I? I'm taking a decent portion of my time to just talk with you. You got a point there. Fair enough. A $10 raise sounds reasonable. Anyway, thanks again, Laura. I'll let you get on with your day. I'm not going to trouble you with my drama anymore. You sure take your time in that garage, don't you? What the hell is going on in there? What, are you a girl or something? I bet you don't even know the difference between a pair of pliers and a wrench, huh? Just how long is it going to take for you to get that job done? Are you kidding me right now, Martin? It's only been about an hour since you told me to do this. Just how long do you expect this type of thing to go for? If you're a capable and competent individual, I don't think it should take long at all. What are you doing in there? Painting your nails or something? I'm telling you now, if I catch you doing something that's not what I told you to do, there's going to be consequences. Look, how about you just settle down, Martin? I'm doing exactly as you told me to do. It's just that the task that you got me to do today is unreasonable. I mean, you actually want me to service your car? You do realize that's not the type of thing the average guy can do, right? Oh, is that what you're trying to tell me right now? You're just some average guy. I thought you were going to be more than that. What happened to all that talk about expanding your business and whatnot? Clearly it sounds like you're someone that doesn't have the ambition and belief in himself to do these things. So go on then. Hurry up and get that car serviced. I'm not going to wait here all day. Well, even if I was experienced in this area, you're asking me to do this in an hour, aren't you? That's just ridiculous. Not even a guy that's been doing this forever could service a car in that amount of time. Not only that, but I don't even have all the necessary tools to do a good job here. I'm working with the bare basics. Once again, all I'm hearing is excuses. Hey, Martin, stop looking down on me. I'm not trying to give you excuses right now. I'm explaining the facts. Like, come on. Are you trying to tell me that this is the type of job that you could do? Of course I can't do this job. Do you know how old I am right now? 
I can barely pick up the TV remote without cracking a few bones in my back. Okay, fine. Let's put your age aside. What about the knowledge of how a car works? Would you be able to do this type of job if you were younger and you had the tools? Have you ever done something like this before? Well, I've never done something like it, but I'd find a way to do it. That's just ridiculous. I'm not going to believe that. A guy with no experience and has no background knowledge could not do a job like this. Especially the fact that this is not your average car. This is a Rolls Royce that we're talking about. They have a very specific mechanic that usually services these types of things. You actually expect me to do it all within two hours? That's nuts. Well, if you love my daughter and you want to contribute to the healthy functioning of our family, then you're going to do what's necessary. How have you been treating my daughter anyway? What do you mean, how I've been treating her? How can I treat her in any way? I don't get the time to see her because I'm stuck here doing this. Okay, fine. But are you attending to her every need? I'm telling you right now, you've got a special one of my kids right there. She's not like everyone else. The girl is hungry. She's got a heavy appetite on her. If you don't feed her, she's going to start getting feisty with you. Yeah, tell me about it. I'm the one that's been married to her after all these years, aren't I? Don't give me that lip, boy. I'm giving you advice that's going to help you. I just want you to sit there and say thank you. Anyway, she's the most needy out of my children. She needs the emotional attention, the financial prowess, and a guy that she can respect. That's a lot. And I'm not really sure if you can handle it. But why wouldn't I be? I've been doing it for the past ten years, haven't I? It's not like I've been dating her for two weeks. Yeah, well, if you don't do your job properly, you'll only be dating her for another two weeks. What did you just say? Look, I've had a talk with my daughter, and she's told me about our little arrangement. Did she know? So, she actually believed what I was talking about the other day. Finally, that will keep her off my back about this whole cheating thing. If I can just have a healthy relationship with her, I can get all the other stuff done easily, including this car. Yeah, well, I wouldn't get so hopeful and optimistic if I were you. I gave her a rundown of the situation, and she fully understood where I'm coming from. She agreed that you needed to have some sense beaten into you. She fully supports you coming here every week and helping me. You gotta be joking me right now. You're actually serious when you say that, aren't you? How could she do that? She's the one that's complaining that we never have time to spend with each other. Now she's just made it even harder to do so. Yeah, and you know what? That's not all. She tells me how you've been treating her. You've been making her cook for you. You've barely given her any money to enjoy her own time. Not only that, that you even get her to clean the house. This is all on top of the fact that she already has a job right now. Are you sure you're the type of guy that can lead your family? Because I'm telling you right now, I was telling her about a couple of the candidates I know outside, and I think they're a better choice for her. What do you mean, candidates? You're acting like you've got some prospectful marriage partners for her. That's exactly what I've got. I'm a man that looks at his options. I've gathered as many options as I can, and I'm gonna tell you, you've got some competition, kid. We've got an astronaut, an engineer, and a guy working on an application that's about to get big on the market. You've just got your little family restaurant. That's a joke. You better work fast in making that thing popular. Yeah, the more you keep inviting me over to waste time trying to find out how to service a car like this, then the less likely that type of thing is going to happen. Let me tell you some things about your daughter. If she's complaining about any aspect of our relationship at the moment, it's entirely her fault. Lately, she's been buying pointless items that are putting a hole in our budget. It doesn't give me the safety to open up a new restaurant. Not only that, but she keeps telling me that she's out with her friends. If she wants some quality time together, she needs to reduce the time with her so-called friends. If that's who she's really with. What needs to happen is for you to do a better job. Or better yet, divorce! Separate and let her have someone that she can actually be happy with. Just shut up, Martin. You don't get to decide how I run my relationship. Well, look, do you want me to service this car or not? Because you're kind of distracting me. I need to use this phone to research what I'm actually doing right now. 
You really have quite the mouth on you, don't you? Well, listen up. There's one last thing that I need to tell you. Do you remember that big wall I have with all my children on it? All my offspring? Yes, I remember that pretentious thing. Do you ever stop talking about it? What about it? Well, I've got some good news. The little ducklings are coming back to their mother. Everyone's coming back to their papa's villa for a huge lunch. This is going to be big. Well, congratulations. I hope you guys have a very fun time. You won't be coming. Why? I'm not even respected by you. I don't think I'm part of this family. I'm just going to spend that weekend to myself. Recover whatever energy I've expended here. No, 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 buddy. You don't get to walk out of this one that easily. You've got a job to do. I don't want you sitting on your butt for that day. You're going to be working. Are you kidding me right now? What exactly do you want me to do? Well, this is your chance at redemption, isn't it? Every one of us remembers that tragic dinner we had at my house the other night. You've got some time to think of some new recipes to serve me and my family. You know what, Martin? I'm this close to just saying no. I'm sorry. What did you say? Yeah, look. I can see why you're doing all this lately. You've got no intention of us actually getting along with each other. This is some weird power trip for you. You enjoy bullying me, telling me what to do, insulting me, putting me down. Making yourself look bigger and me just look like one of the common folk. I guess that's the type of guy you are. Incredibly toxic. And you know what? It's fine, because I've got to accept it. But whether or not I have to put up with it is a different matter. I'm choosing to avoid you. Whatever my wife thinks, and whatever this family turns out to be, I've had enough. Are you sure about that, Michael? Is that your final decision? Positive. After today, I'm not doing anything. I don't even care what happens to this car. In all honesty, I started doing something with it, but I don't know if I can reassemble it again. I guess you have to just use all that money you have and hire a proper mechanic to do it. Okay, Michael. You know what? Maybe I have been a little bit harsh on you. Sure, I've been enjoying bullying you around a lot. It's funny seeing you just obey what I say on the simple fact that you want to have a good relationship with me. But I'm going to cut you a deal now. This lunch that's coming up. You do it, and you do it well. Do that, and this is the last time we'll have this type of interaction. I'll accept you as the man that married my daughter. I'll give you whatever respect you want. We won't have an issue with each other again. How can I believe what you're saying right now? This could all just be another lie for all I know. Well, hey, I guess you're just going to have to trust me. I cross my heart and I hope to die. You promise this will be the last time you try and torment me like this? Of course, but this is on the condition that you actually do a good job. I don't want our food coming out looking like it was served in a dog's bowl. You show us what all those years of culinary expertise have accumulated to. Show us your best work. If I'm impressed, you'll get the peace that you so longingly desire. Fine. You know what, Martin? I accept your deal. And I'm hoping this will be the last time you and I have an issue with each other. But if you really want me to pull off a decent meal for you guys, you're gonna have to get the ingredients for me. I'm not gonna put a hole in my pocket for it. Of course, of course. Before you go today, just write everything down. I'll get you everything you need. Good. Then we have a deal. Now let me get back to this car. I've got things to do. I don't want to be wasting my day here. Hey, Laura. Thanks again for yesterday. I'm just messaging you to get an update on what happened last night. How was the store? I'm glad you asked. Everything went amazingly again. I got all the information on the amount of sales we had. You're going to be in for a treat when you come in. Are you serious? It went that well again? Is there anything that you can't do, Laura? Well, hey, with the right amount of salary, I could probably do anything. Okay, okay, take it easy there, cowgirl. I still have to have enough money for myself to keep this business afloat. Well, I wouldn't be worried about that type of thing if I were you. It seems that our customers are increasing lately. 
We've got a massive line outside our door of people waiting to come in. Out in the cold! You should really consider expanding and getting some more seats in. Are you kidding me right now? We're getting that popular that fast? This is incredible! I have to say it's all thanks to that little new recipe you've got on the menu. People are absolutely eating it up. They just keep coming back for more. That's awesome to hear. I had a feeling that thing would start hitting it off. I might keep that one on the menu and start excluding a couple of the other items. I feel sorry for Dad, but some of his recipes are just going to stay in the old cookbook, I guess. Anyways, is this the last time that something like this will happen? I'll be honest with you. I'm managing everything quite well, but if things keep getting this busy, I'm going to need a little bit of a hand. Maybe you should hire some extra employees or something? No, no, I can't do that. I fully intend to be involved in my business. It's just that I'm really held up with family issues. Okay, so I'm guessing that guy still doesn't appreciate you, huh? Yeah. Well, hopefully it's all coming to a close. My father-in-law has given me his word that everything is going to end next week. I'm going to do him one last favor, and then he's either going to accept me as the guy that married his daughter or him and I are going to be on bad terms forever. I'm prepared for either outcome. Wow. I guess this is the final battle, huh? Things are getting really heated with you guys. I know. And I'm telling you right now, I just want it to be over already. I'm really worried about what's going to happen. If this is the last time, I'm pretty sure he's going to make the most of it. He's going to insult me as much as he can. Let's just hope that I don't accidentally drop the knife that I'm using to cut the vegetables and it lands on his foot or something. Hey, you know what? Now that we're talking about this, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. Something that might actually help you. Look, if there's anything that's going to help me, I'm open to suggestions. What are you thinking? Well, I don't know about you, but I've been seeing a lot of interesting videos lately. People have been recording their families, all the things that go on in their households. I've seen a couple of those. It's usually those really happy families that show up how great their life is. Oh no, this is different. It's way different. It's on the other end of the spectrum. This is showing people how depraved their families are. What the? Who's watching that type of thing? You would be surprised. These types of videos get a ton of views. People love to hate someone, right? And from what you've been describing to me, your dad sounds like a prime target for these types of videos. It's a really missed opportunity if you don't get this captured. I know if I was in your position, that's what I would be doing. Okay. So you're telling me to, like, set up some cameras or something? Catch him in the act? Show everyone just how much of a horrible villain he is. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Let's be honest. Is he really that mean to everyone? Is that the type of face that he wants everyone to know about? I'm pretty sure to be as successful as him. He's been putting on a nice smile for other people. Let's show them what that smile looks like when it's upside down. You know what, Laura? I think that's an absolutely amazing idea. The question is, how am I going to get the cameras installed? And where? Well, I'll leave that to your imagination. But I guess you could say that you wanted to do one last favor and go to his house and start cleaning the kitchen or something. Put the cameras in a place where you think he's going to exploit you and then capture everything for everyone to see. This is just brilliant. Laura, where do you come up with these ideas? Just give me another raise in my salary and I could probably do it all. Hey, don't say that. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if you could cure global warming or something. But you know what? I'm not going to give you a raise in your salary, but I will pay you for something a little bit different from the normal work that we've been doing. Well, a girl's gotta eat, and I'm very hungry. What do you have in mind? Here's the thing. I was talking to my father-in-law, and he mentioned something about my wife. It seems that she's really supportive of that treatment that I've been experiencing recently. I'm just putting a couple of the puzzle pieces together, and I think she might be doing something behind my back. Oh, wow. What makes you say that? Well, just the fact that she's never at home, and she's supposedly with her friends. Not only that, but her dad has started giving her candidates to get rid of me. I'm not really sure if these people are keen on her or anything, but I just need to be sure. Seeing as you suggested this little sly idea of the cameras, do you reckon you could do a little bit of spying on her and see what she's getting up to? Oh, wow! That's, like, totally way up my alley! Is it really? Yeah, 
used to do this type of thing to my old boyfriend all the time. This is very familiar ground to me. Oh, wow. Well, I guess I can trust you then. Also, if you can get some solid evidence of what she's doing, that'd be great. Pictures, audio, anything. Yes, sir. If you can just add an extra digit to my savings account, then we have a deal. I guess you're the one that makes the rules. Just remember, if you keep charging me this amount of money, I probably won't have any work for you. What's taking you so long out there? We got a party starting soon, don't we? I need you to start preparing the food. I got all the ingredients, so hurry up already. That's what we agreed to, right? I would get the stuff that you need and you would do the job. So what's taking you so long? Are you kidding me right now? Are you actually trying to rush me out there? I was intending to come over today and start prepping the food. Instead, you told me that you needed your lawn mowed first. You don't think you could have told me something like that in advance? I'm busting my balls out here just to get this thing done. Yeah, right. You and I have already established that you've got nothing down there. I wouldn't be surprised if it was some black hole just extending out into the abyss. Just shut up, Martin. Let me do what I have to do. Well, hey, listen. Whatever you've done right now, just finish up. I want you to get into the shower and start doing that preparation. Are you kidding me? The lawn isn't even half done yet. Well, that's just too bad. I'm not going to sacrifice a good lunch just to mow that lawn. Now hurry up and get into that shower. Wait, Martin. I need to go home and get a spare change of clothes. I can't wear the clothes that I've been mowing the lawn with. That's fine. I'll get you an outfit. Hey, Martin. I've already finished in the shower. I'm waiting for you to come in and bring me a spare change of clothes. You rushed me in there and didn't give me a change of clothes. You told me you were going to put them in here while I was washing myself. Well, I'm finished now and there's nothing here. If you want me to get to that cooking already, can you hurry up and hand me some clothes? I'm not so sure what you're talking about right now, Michael. There should be some clothes in there. I put an outfit in there just for you to use. Martin, this isn't funny. Just hurry up already. We don't have time for this. Well, there should be a very nice outfit hanging on the wall. I put it there just for you. Just put that thing on and get to the preparation already. Martin, I'm not wearing that thing. Give me some actual clothes right now. What's wrong? You don't think that's your size? Don't worry. I'm sure it's probably a little bit small, but that adds to its effect, doesn't it? <laughs> it would really suit you. Everyone would love to see you walk out and put that thing on. Martin, I'm not going to ask you again. I want you to come back here, give me a fresh pair of clothes, and give me a towel to dry myself with. You don't need to dry yourself with a towel. I left the dryer in there. You can use that to blow off all the water on your body. Then you can just wear that outfit that I've prepared for you. Martin, I'm not playing any games. I'm not putting this outfit on. Why not? Is the skirt too short for you? Trust me, with those skinny little girl legs of yours, it'll be a good look. I'm not wearing this maid outfit. Why the hell have you done this? Was this your little plan all along? You're gonna humiliate me in front of everyone? You know, for a guy that talks about being successful and working hard to get to the place where he is, you really are childish, aren't you? Just who the hell would do something like this? Well, what can I say, Michael? This is the situation you're in right now. What are you going to do about it? You got two options. You can come out of there wearing nothing, showing little Johnny to my little grandsons and granddaughters. I'll have the police called on you in a heartbeat. Or you can have the second option. You wear the outfit that I prepared for you and you play the good boy like you're supposed to. Stand there in the kitchen, cutting up the veggies. And you can even call me master while you're at it. That will give everyone a kick at the party. So now everything is making sense. I'm not the person that's cooking today. I'm the entertainment. I'm for you and all your family to have a laugh at. That's what you've been planning this whole time, right? Do you really want me to give you confirmation? You already know it. So, what's it going to be, Michael? A temporary day of humiliation or a lifetime in prison? I'll let you decide. 
You get back here. You get back here right now. How dare you insult me in front of everyone? Don't you realize that my grandchildren are there? What do you think they're going to think of me when they realize I did something like that? You're going to be in for a world of hurt, boy. You better come back here if you know what's good for you. Just shut your mouth, Martin. You and I are done. I don't want anything to do with you. I'm sick of being tormented by you. How the hell did you do that anyway? How did I do what? How did you get yourself clothed? I made it so that it would be impossible for you. The only option you would have to wear is that outfit. How is it that you were able to come to me fully clothed and able to throw that outfit in my face? What you didn't realize is that your bathroom has a window. It's accessible from the outside. I contacted a very close workmate of mine to come to that window and take one of the uniforms I have from my restaurant. She passed that uniform to me through the window and I was able to get out without humiliating myself. That's when I went straight up to you and I threw the outfit straight in your face. You conniving little dog. That's not the way it was meant to happen. You were meant to come out there in your little tutu and start cooking for everyone. We were meant to be sitting there laughing at you as you try to make a good meal. It was meant to be a grand spectacle. People were meant to get a photo of you. Instead, you come out and you throw that outfit in my face and insult me in front of everyone. Well, they all needed to hear it. You're not this big, great man that everyone should respect. They needed to know the truth. They need to know how much of a horrible person you are. Yeah, well, you know what? You wanted a fight and you certainly got one, didn't you? How's that face of yours feel? I've still got a lot of strength back from my younger days. You aren't the first worm that I've had to squash. My face feels just fine. You know what I have to say? Thank you for that one. Thanks for hitting me in the face. Why would you thank me? Oh, you'll see at some point. All those insults and slurs that you threw at me as well. I thank you for that too. I'm going to make you suffer for everything that's happened until this point, Martin. You're going to regret treating me this way. Wow, big talk coming from the man that clings to my daughter like she's the only thing that's keeping him alive. You do realize what's going to happen after this. You and my daughter are going to get a divorce. There's no way she's going to stay with someone that disrespects her father this way. Yeah, well, you know what, Martin? Maybe that's the future that I welcome. Maybe I've had enough of your daughter as well. I'm sorry. You've had enough with someone that you've been dating for basically your whole life. Are you sure you want to give her up that easily, Michael? You're never going to find a woman that's this charismatic, good-looking, and hard-working as my daughter. That's as far as you know. Here's the reality of the situation. I've been doing a little bit of investigation into what your daughter has been up to. I found out everything. She really has been cheating on me this whole time. All this bad behavior has been stemming from the fact that she's lost interest in me. I know exactly what she was trying to do. What did you just say? Your daughter was trying to secure a different guy. Every time she grew more and more doubtful of me being successful with this business. She wanted to throw away the fact that we had years and years of friendship. Years of getting to know each other. And what was it all for? To get with a guy that had a bit more money. Well, I gotta be honest. I don't care what happens from this point on. Even if she just magically started respecting me and wanted to get back together, I wouldn't degrade myself that way. Me building this business and creating franchises was meant to be our dream. We were supposed to do it together, and she threw it away. It's going to be a win-win situation if we both just got that divorce. Fine. You know what? Have it your way. You're actually doing us a favor. We don't want to be connected with you in the first place. She should have made a decision like this a long time ago. It wouldn't have wasted everyone's time. You know what, Martin? I think that's the first time that you and I agree on something. Well, don't worry, because your son-in-law is now out of the picture. I won't be there tarnishing your reputation. You're just going to be doing that yourself. What the hell did you just say to me? What is that even supposed to mean? You'll see soon enough. You little brat! How dare you? How dare you do something like that to me? Do you know who I am? Do you know what I could do to you? I could destroy you! You know that? 
You've really got some nerve posting those videos of me. Oh wow, I guess word finally reached you about those videos. I was wondering when that would happen. They were getting quite a lot of views on them. What did you think about the video quality? I wish it was a little bit better, but like you could see everything, right? That disgusting, scornful face of yours. Gross. And you could even get some good audio quality of you abusing me. That right there is good content. People ate that up like it was chocolate being handed out at an elementary school. You think you're so clever, don't you? Trying to utilize the situation to put yourself in a better position. Do you have any idea what you've done to me? Do you have any idea of the opinion the people have of me? That thing has gone viral. Everyone in the country knows about me. They know all the businesses I own. They sure do. So let me ask you a question, Martin. How's all that working out for you? Are your businesses flourishing even though everyone knows that you're a complete scumbag? Of course they're not flourishing. Everything's going down the toilet right now. The stock prices are going down. I'm losing employees. I've even had to shut down one of my businesses. You're telling me it's going to get worse from this point on? Lovely. It's all because of you. I want you to take that video down right now. I'm not going to stand for such disrespect. Wait, are you kidding me right now? You don't actually expect me to do as you say, do you? Especially after all the things that have happened up until this point. You sat there treating me like a slave, calling me a dog, treating me like I wasn't even human. What well, makes you think that I'm actually going to take down that video for you? I'm going to enjoy every little bit of slander that goes against your name. I see. So that's how you want to play this game, is it? Fine. I get it. You have the leverage over me. You get to call the shots. So here's my offer. You can have my daughter back. You'll have my blessing all over again. You know what? I'll even convince her to respect you a lot more. I'll make sure that she's on a tight leash and she's not seeing anyone behind her back. Sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? You get the woman that you love back, and you are also tied in with a very powerful family again. What more could you want? Are you kidding me right now? You don't actually expect me to agree to those terms, do you? I'm barely getting anything out of that. What do you mean you're getting nothing? You're getting my daughter, aren't you? What else could you want? That's the thing that you've been putting your whole life towards, isn't it? A future for you and my daughter. Yeah, well, that was before and this is now. I couldn't give two cents about your daughter. What she does from this point on is beyond me. I don't care. The only thing I care about is growing my little business here and watching your businesses fall. Okay, then fine. You don't care about my daughter, but you're still going to be connected with a very powerful family. That should be enough motivation in and of itself. What family are we talking about here? We're talking about the family that has been exposed. Everyone knows that the CEO at the very top is an abusive, cruel old man. Do you really want me to be associated with a family like that? No. I'm going to make the smart decision and leave you all in the dust. You ungrateful little brat! How dare you do this to me? I bet you're making money off that video, aren't you? Well, I hope that money crumbles in your hand. Keep it up, Martin. Just keep showing me how pathetic you are. It's very good entertainment for me. Anyway, it's been a very long time since I could actually focus on my business. I'm going to get back to that. Oh, wait, hold on a second before I forget. I should probably file for that divorce. I'll do that one first anyway. Enjoy having everything taken away from you. Michael? Michael, it's been a while, hasn't it? How have you been? I really miss you. I'm so sorry about everything that happened. I know you were really angry. I should have been more sympathetic about your situation. I should have realized that what my dad was doing was evil. I was such an idiot for not taking your side. It's been a couple of months. You're not the type of guy to hold a grudge. I wonder if you've forgiven me for everything. What do you want? Jenny, I'm a very busy man. I'm ten times as busy as I was when I was with you. I know, I know. Things are going really well, aren't they? You've actually managed to expand your business. 
Not only that, in such a short amount of time, too. What happened? How did you manage to do something like that? Well, after all the drama that was caused between your father and me, I gained a lot of attention. It was very good advertising for my business. A lot of investors saw the potential of what was happening, and they decided to give me money to open up shops all around the country. Who knows? If we keep going at this pace, we could be the new McDonald's or something. It's really amazing. I mean, this has been your dream, right? This is what you've been trying to do this whole time. I'm just so happy that you're able to do it. Look at this. This is a different person than the one who was talking to me all those months ago. What happened to that judgmental woman that thought I was below her? Well, I mean, take a look at you now. I think you're exceeding even my father. Things have been really bad. I wish you were here. I wish I had my husband to support me throughout everything. I'm not your husband. You and I have finished already. I know, but some time has passed, right? We got that divorce so fast. I don't even know if it was the right decision. Don't you ever miss what we used to be? Don't you have a dream about what we could be? What do you mean, what we could be? Well, you've come so far on your own. Imagine if you had support. Someone there behind you. You could take this franchise worldwide. So what? You expect me to forgive you for cheating on me all those times? Just forget it happened. Obviously not. Look, I'm gonna have to repay for my sins. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. I'll be as submissive as you want. I'll do whatever you say. If you don't want me to hang out with friends, I won't. If you want me to wear a particular type of clothing, I will. All I want is for you to give me the chance to be back in your life. Come on. We've been dating our whole lives. We can't throw it away over something like this. I've heard your offer, and I'm gonna have to decline. I'm not interested in you, Jenny. I've had enough. Besides, I've already got someone that's supporting me. They've been supporting me throughout everything. The business and my personal life. Oh, wow. You've actually found someone. She must be a really good woman. It's Laura, the girl that used to work in my restaurant. Wait, what did you just say? Laura? Are you actually seeing Laura? The little bimbo at the restaurant? I'm not just seeing her. I'm starting a family with her. You see, my business is now flourishing. Soon enough, I'm going to get someone to handle all the operations for me. I won't have to be running around like a chicken without its head on. I can finally settle down. So you were seeing that girl behind my back. You despicable man. I should have known. I should have known that you were lying to me. Actually, no. I did all of this the right way. I was never cheating on you. But I did have a very close relationship with her. Now that I finally got rid of someone that was toxic in my life, I wanted to replace it with someone that was good. There's nothing wrong with that. Crap. Well, look, I'm in a serious pinch here. Dad's lost everything. His companies are all crumbling to dust. He's going to lose his house. He's not going to be able to pay for my rent. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Figure it out yourself. You bought all those items with my money, right? Maybe you should just sell those. That will buy you a couple of months off the street. Anyway, seeing as you and I are done, I'm not going to be messaging you anymore. In fact, I'm going to have you blocked. Goodbye, Jenny. Hold on a second, Michael. Give me a chance. We could still be together. We could still create something. Please, I know you don't truly love that girl. It's me. I'm the one you love. The one you've been with your whole life. Come on, Michael. Don't leave me. Michael? Michael? With that, my ex-wife Jenny disappeared forever. I didn't hear from her at all. I did hear about Martin and his family, though. Through that, I found out what happened to Jenny. It turns out that many of the candidates who were going to marry Jenny were only after her for the money. They were the type of guys that she wasn't interested in in the first place. They were men who didn't have any prospects for the rest of their lives. They just wanted to leech off someone else. Now that she was a penniless woman, they lost all their interest in her. She was left with no one, having to fend for herself. 
At that point in time, she started looking for work, but she could only find one place. The place where she found work was the first restaurant that my dad opened. I've got her on surveillance to make sure she's not doing anything mischievous, and everyone there is making her do the most disgusting tasks. She'll be scrubbing away until her hands disappear. As for Martin, with high pride like that, he was bound to fall at some point. People found out further scandals about just how corrupt his businesses were. It seems that he was bullying people in his own company. He had many lawsuits against him, and he was now left penniless. That guy who kept telling me to become a great man like him is now worth nothing. The rest of his family won't do anything to help him because they don't want to be associated with him. They're going to go off being successful and he's not going to be able to bask in their glory. As for Laura and me, we've expanded the franchise so much that we've been able to hire more capable people than myself. With my father's legacy still living on, I've been able to create my own legacy. I'm going to raise my son to be a great man. And maybe one day, he can take over the thing his grandfather created. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, please remember to click the like button. See you in the next video!